I want to start this video with the two most important settings for keyboard and mouse players, which is ADS sensitivity type and your monitor distance coefficient. There is so many different options to choose from here, and these options will drastically affect your aim. So in order to test all these different options, I downloaded a thing called Sensitivity Matcher from Kovacs, and it's meant for matching your sensitivity between two different games. And it does that by allowing me to press Alt Backspace on my keyboard, and it does a perfect 360. So I'm on red relative with my monitor distance coefficient on 1.33, which is the default setting. Now look what happens when I ADS and then I do it again. It is not a perfect 360, meaning my sensitivity has been slowed down when I ADS. But this is the default setting, and most people would recommend that you change your monitor distance coefficient to something like 1.78, well, exactly 1.78. And the reason you do that is because you're supposed to be getting a calculator out, and you're supposed to take the width divided by the height of your monitor. So since I have a 16 by 9 monitor, I do 16 divided by 9, and it equals 1.7778, which rounds up to 1.78 for someone with an ultra wide monitor it'd be 21 divided by 9 so you'd want to set it to 2.33 but the problem is when you do that see i have it set to 1.78 here i do the 360 and it's perfect when i'm hip firing but the problem is when i ads put it right on that dot and do the 360 again, it doesn't do a perfect 360, meaning that it's slower when I'm ADS. Another setting I see under monitor distance coefficient recommended a lot would be setting it to zero, which technically makes your ADS speed the exact same sensitivity as your hip fire speed. And in theory, that's going to help make your aim a lot better because you're going to be able to really master your sensitivity because of your muscle memory. But the problem with that is when you're ADS, your sense is going to feel significantly slower, even though it is the same sensitivity, but your optics are at a higher zoom level, making it feel slower. So on zero coefficient here, obviously we do the 360 and it's a perfect 360, but if we ADS and we do it again, you can see that it is significantly slower. And this can really throw a lot of people off, myself included. But then we also have these ADS sensitivity type options, which by default is set to relative, but I've seen a lot of people recommend Legacy MW. And what I found with Legacy MW is very interesting. I found that if we do a hip fire, again, it's a perfect 360, but if we ADS on that ball there and we do the 360 again, it is perfectly the exact same sensitivity as your hip fire sense and it's just consistently the same every time it doesn't matter what zoom level we're at we got the iron sights on the pistol here and it does the perfect 360 again and this might be what a lot of you are looking for but to me personally it felt a little too fast when i was ads and then we have the last option here which is legacy black ops and if we do the exact same thing again we'll see that perfect 360 we ads and it's a lot slower it almost looks like it's putting your monitor distance coefficient to zero when you do legacy black ops so you're gonna have to make a choice for yourself here i'm personally gonna be on relative and 1.33 since that is just what i'm used to at this point but i would recommend you either try the legacy mw setting or have your ads sensitivity type set to relative with their coefficient sent to 1.33 1.78 or zero, but keep in mind you don't want to use 1.78 for the coefficient if you don't have a 16 by 9 monitor. Just hop into the gun range, try all four of those out, and see what feels the best to you. Now, I want to talk about how to find your perfect sensitivity, and for the majority of people, it's very simple. All you want to do is find an object like the little dot here we've been looking at and ADS and kind of strafe and try to hold your crosshair on there as best as possible. You also want to try this while hip firing and I'm doing a pretty bad job at it right now, but you also want to do it as hip firing. And if you find yourself struggling to keep it on there, adjust your sensitivity accordingly until you're able to hold it on there at a pretty good rate. But I found a better way to find your perfect sensitivity for all you super nerdy people out there like me. And that is with a game called Oblivity, which is found on Steam for $10. And no, I am not sponsored by them at all. I just love the program. And what Oblivity is, is it's an aim trainer, but it's more than an aim trainer. They have a feature in the game called Sensitivity Finder, and it allows you to find 
your perfect sensitivity. And it does that by having you play all these different aiming scenarios. And while you're playing all those different aiming scenarios, it is constantly adjusting your sensitivity to see what you perform the best on. So after a few days of doing this and doing a bunch of different scenarios while it's constantly adjusting your sensitivity, it will eventually give you your perfect sensitivity. For me, it is 4.7 for Call of Duty on 800 DPI, but that's not your only option to find your perfect sensitivity anymore. Aim Labs is a free program that anyone can get on Steam, and it is another aim training program. And no, this is not sponsored either. The best part about Aim Labs is that it's free, but you want to go over to Custom on the top here, and you'll see Sensitivity on the right side, and you will see that there is a Sensitivity Finder here, but currently it is only for flicking. So Oblivity is going to be much more accurate for the time being, but it does say right here that there is more options coming in the future for the sensitivity finder and i'm going to assume it's going to be similar to oblivity so if you don't mind waiting for that feature aim labs is obviously going to be better just because it's free but we'll have to see how this feature actually is once it releases because even when it does come out oblivity could still just be superior now let me quickly go over the rest of my keyboard and mouse settings for you guys now i play on 4.7 cents as i said before on 800 dpi now if you click more here there is something i do which is turn the v air vehicle and ground vehicle sensitivity multiplier to 0.25 because for some reason when you're flying a helicopter or you're driving a car in this game your sensitivity is jacked up super high so if that bothered you as much as it bothered me just change it right there i have my ads sensitivity multiplier set to one and then i have my ads sensitivity transition timing set to instant and then we covered all these options here before and then i have custom sensitivity per zoom off vertical aim access i have this all set to default and then if you do play the third person mode something i would recommend you guys trying out is switching this precision option to none i noticed the one time that i played the third person mode that every time i would ads it would like ads to the center and it, it felt kind of off so try it with it set to none here if you do play that mode and then everything under mouse calibration we want turned all the way off or down here besides mouse wheel delay i leave it at default which is 80 so that way if i accidentally bump my mouse wheel it's not gonna switch my weapons for me moving over to the gameplay tab tab here now under automatic sprint i really recommend you guys play with automatic tactical sprint on this game i know the movement's not very good and there's really no movement at all in warzone 2 but this will improve your movement a lot close backpack on sprint is something i would recommend you guys turning on i'm not sure if it's on or off by default but i probably should mention tactical sprint behavior here if you don't want to play with automatic tactical sprint on i know some people might not like that i would really recommend setting this to single tap sprint that way you just have to press your shift button once and you're automatically tactical sprinting instead of having to double tap it automatic airborne mantle we have set to partial share slide and dive inputs i have this set to independent so i can put my slide and dive key binds on two separate keys and then if we click under the movement advanced settings here most of this stuff I do have set to default. I did change this plunging underwater to move freely. That way I just have to look down to start swimming under underwater. Sprinting door bash. I recommend you guys turn this on. Parachute auto deploy. This is something you really want off. Otherwise your parachute is going to be deploying at a much higher height than you can actually deploy it with it turned off. But you just be careful you don't want to break your ankles this is really useful for getting the jump on your opponents when you are flying in at the start of the game because a lot of people don't know about this and they pull their parachutes really high and you can just pull yours a lot lower and get a gun before them and then ledge hang mantle behavior i recommend you guys set this to movement based this makes it so you just kind of move forward in order to mantle up so you don't have to click your mantle key again and i believe this is all set to default here now let's back out of the movement advanced keybinds and we're going to scroll Scroll down a bit. I do have aim down sight behavior on toggle. It should be on hold though, because that is how I was testing out all that stuff with the 360s before. This stuff is all default here up until armor plate behavior. I recommend you guys put this to apply all. So when you do press your armor plate button, it's automatically gonna apply all your armor plates. So you don't have to keep clicking it over and over. It's gonna make plating much faster for you guys. And I know there's gonna be people out there saying, well, maybe I don't wanna put all my armor plates on in a certain scenario because that could get me killed but if that's happening 
All you have to do is YY, which is just pressing your switch weapon button twice and it will cancel your armor plates, applying all of them. Then going into combat advanced settings here, these are all literally the default settings. I don't remember changing anything in here. And then we're going to scroll down and most of this stuff is all just set to default. Actually, yeah, all the rest of this stuff is set to default here. There's not a whole lot to these settings, guys. I mean, I will scroll through all my keybinds for you guys who are interested in checking out my keybinds but just keep in mind that keybinds are generally going to be personal preference what works best for me is probably not going to work the best for you and then here's all the advanced keybinds i have set up so if you are looking for a starting point i guess you could try these but hopefully this video helped you guys out just a reminder i do stream monday through saturday mornings over on twitch link is at the top of the description feel free to drop a follow come say what's up in chat i'd really appreciate it.